Um, you know, at that point, uh, you know, J Japanese strength was kind of down to its last, uh, last drop. But it is true, uh, as the caller says, uh, that uh, the Japanese were, were essentially pouring all of their remaining strength, their military strength, uh, and their civilian population. Uh, they were preparing to, to meet uh, the invasion and to fight us, as she says, tooth and nail. Uh, you had women and children even being organized into militias, uh, being trained how to fight with you know, bamboo spears, uh, being told to use you know, kitchen knives if necessary. And, um, and so I, I, you know, I think avoiding an invasion of Japan was absolutely critical. Uh, and I think it was so critical that if it was true that you know, really if you could say the choice was uh, bomb two cities uh, with an atomic bomb or launch a bloody invasion. It was either one of those, is one or the other, door A or door B. I think if that was true, I, I think that uh, using the bombs exactly the way we did, that is hitting cities uh, without a prior explicit warning, um, I do think that you could, you could defend that. The traditional way in which Americans have, have understood the atomic bombings, you know, sets up this kind of forced binary where you, you have to choose either you know, hit these cities uh, without warning or launch an invasion. And I, I don't, I personally don't think that that's right. Um, I think that there were uh, many other options other than just those two. Um, <clears throat> and I think you can make a pretty good case, although of course it's a counterfactual that an invasion would not have been necessary, uh, you know, with or without the atomic bombs. Keep in mind that the, that the invasion of Kyushu, the first stage of the planned invasion, uh, the target date for that was November 1st. That's almost three months after uh, the bombing of Hiroshima. Uh, and, um, and so, you know, the idea that the bombs were a last resort, you know, to an invasion that was just about to happen, that's not quite right. Um, but as I say, I mean, you know, veterans uh, of that war had their own very, very strongly held beliefs uh, about uh, what had happened at the end of the war. And, uh, and as a historian, as you know, someone who's interviewed hundreds, literally hundreds of World War II veterans, I have never uh, made it a practice to argue with World War II veterans about this. I present my views, uh, but I think it's important to recognize uh, and to honor uh, the, um, the feelings, uh, the very strong feelings that veterans have about this subject.